Hello and welcome back to Grafted Branch Ministry. As always, I'm Scotty Erb. Today is a message of encouragement. Hopefully it comforts you, but mainly I'm trying to encourage you to comfort others in Christ. Now, I've recently done a group of messages, group of videos, talking about the rapture and the last days and how that day is upon us right now. Uh, if you turn that aside and say, oh, there's been all these different times that people have predicted the end of days and yada yada. Okay, you're just foolish um, if you're dismissing what we see happening in the world right now and how it pertains to scripture. Yes, there are still some things that need to occur um, according to prophecy. And I, I don't know if you missed all of 2020, but that year transformed our world pretty rapidly, pretty quickly. It seemed like in the blink of an eye, we are living in a completely different realm that is entirely nutty compared to how it once was just the year before in 2019. But anyways, so comforting and encouraging, teaching one another. Um, I wrote down some thoughts. I'm not going to read it all, but uh, use the time you have left before our gathering together unto him, i.e. the rapture, to be built up more and more in all knowledge and spiritual understanding, having our confidence in God and not in self. Because as the times draw nearer to the last days, the last trump, as in scripture, in these last days, life will get tougher and more challenging for the Christian believer. Persecution is going to get worse. And if you're paying attention to the world, okay, um, particularly in America, I don't pay attention to other realms that much. I look into Israeli news just for prophetical reasons pertaining to scripture. But if you live in America also, and you're watching this, try and convince me or convince yourself how Christians would have an easy time here in America right now with the agendas that they're pushing everything that's going on okay if you go to a college system a collegiate level of education according to society they denounce God they denounce the creation of God and the power of God they tear it down and they teach evolution and other hypotheticals that still haven't been proven. There's still a theory. Anyways, it's all an effort, evidently, of the Antichrist. Uh, I believe it was in First or Second Peter how he said, uh, "Hereby know ye the spirit of Antichrist, um, and a true believer, anyone that can confess that Jesus." is come in the flesh, is of God, and any that deny that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, and it says is come in the flesh, any that deny that, hereby know ye they are the Antichrist, they are not of God. And even though there are many Antichrists in the world today. So, I'm rambling on. But let's look at some examples that we have in the New Testament, particularly in the writings of Paul. Okay, yeah, I'm a little Pauline, if you would, in a lot of my studies. But he is our... He is our disciple. He is our um, apostle. To the Gentiles, if you are not a Jew, if you cannot lay claim to a heritage of a Jew, even if you can right now, he was the one that brought in the dispensation of grace. Okay, and no, I'm not hyper dispensational. 
Okay, the body of Christ did not start with Paul, but the gospel that's unto us today on how we are saved through the shed blood of Christ is taught through the words of Paul. And if you go to other people within scripture, other dispensations, other writings, okay, you're going to find a different gospel. You're going to see different things that make you think that you can lose your salvation or that salvation is by another means such as works but through the writings of paul okay if, if you followed my studies at all if you read scripture for yourself you would know this i'm rambling on wasting time <laughs> let's go to acts chapter 20. we're going to look at an example of paul okay and Paul on the verge of going back to Jerusalem and he knows that he's probably not going to come back and see anybody else because he planned on going to Jerusalem and then to Rome and didn't know that he was going to be led into captivity there. But so Paul chapter Acts Acts chapter 20 verse 24. Let's see what Paul says. Acts chapter 20, verse 24. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. And now, behold, I know that ye all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, okay, and the kingdom of God is not of meat and drink. The moment you believe and you receive the Holy Ghost, you are partain you are a partaker of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven comes when God sets up his millennial reign here on earth. Okay? So he taught, taught the gospel of grace of God. And he was preaching of the kingdom of God. Shall see my face no more. Verse 26 now. We're going down to 28. Wherefore, I take unto you record this day, that I am pure from the blood of all men. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God which he has purchased with his own blood. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Time out. Okay. So Paul is declaring, okay, I've taught the gospel. It was my job to take this gospel out. We're going to find later on that it was a mystery that was revealed to Paul. By Jesus Christ and then he says okay I'm not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God the counsel of God okay if you know Revelation chapter 5 okay comparing that with Revelation chapter 20 we're gonna be kings and priests reigning with God Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 tells us that we are heirs to his inheritance that he and he has purchased us with the blood we are the purchased possession those that believe and accept okay we are sealed with the holy spirit of redemption verse 28 here in acts chapter 20 says take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the holy ghost has made you overseers who is he talking to here? He's talking to all believers. Yeah, there's a group of believers that are there with him. But he says, the Holy Ghost has made you all, fellow believer watching this video, myself included, overseers of the church of God. What is the church of God? It's the body of Christ. Why? Why are we to be overseers of fellow believers? Verse 29 and 30, here still in Acts chapter 20, reads, For I know this, 
that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of yourselves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after themselves. Okay. It's a simple known fact amongst men. Men become very pride of heart. They become very boastful, prideful, built up on themselves and, ooh, look at me. Okay. It's so important to keep yourself humble and to give glory unto God and it's not self-glory. Rather, through your weakness is the true glory of God revealed. All right. With that, go to Colossians now. Follow in your King James Bible, Colossians chapter 1. Okay. So we looked at an example of Paul and why he said that you are overseers. And no, he's not saying, oh, everybody needs to be a pastor and have their own church and yada, yada. No, that's not what he's talking about. Chapter and verse for make a church building, have a pastor to oversee everybody else. Yeah, there are offices of the body of Christ, but all are overseers. Or all are chargeable unto the other fellow believers. Okay? Uh, you read through 1 Corinthians, you'll see that. Now, Colossians chapter 1, verse 3. We're going to kind of skip through chapter 1 here and cover the high points. Verse 3, we give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love which ye have of all the saints, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye, ha ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel. Okay, so... Paul is saying, hey, I give thanks to you guys here in Colossae because I, I, I've heard about your guys' faith and how strong you are and how much love you have for your fellow believers. I, 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 I give thanks. I pray for you all the time, praying always for you. Skip down to verse 9. What particularly does he pray for? And ask yourself, okay, I mean, th this is something that I've been caught up trying to pray for others, uh, praying for myself even. Um, so oftentimes we'll say, oh Lord, give me the strength to get through this, rather than let your glory be shown here in this situation. Lord, I, I, show me the way. Make, make it known. And, and so under, under all those prayers, okay, and oh Lord, God, can, can you just, work on their heart that they might see the truth we make it so personal on what we see rather than having faith in the heart okay and giving god the opportunity so what is what does paul pray for these people at Colossae? look at verse 9 Colossae chapter 1 verse 9 for this cause we also since the day we heard it do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. The knowledge of his will. Having the knowledge of his will. Lord, impart your knowledge unto me. Not show me the way, Lord. No. Okay, we're going to cover it here later on, but Romans chapter 12 tells us by the renewing of our mind. Okay. Um, that we are transformed by the renewing of our mind unto God. We are imparted His knowledge and His spiritual understanding. We will walk in the Spirit and not in the flesh, correct? So, taking all that and compiling it with the topic today, comfort and encourage, strengthen, edify one another. You all are overseers of the body of Christ. You all are overseers over the church of God, okay? The Holy Spirit, in other words. Those that are called out to be a peculiar people unto Him here on the earth today. Now, does that mean go to a church building and become a pastor? No. No, it doesn't. There is no chapter and verse in the, body, in the Bible, in the Word of God, that says that. There is no chapter and verse that says that there is a certain type of garment that you wear or 
Sunday best or any of this or that. Okay? Um, it just says, He who would regard the day unto the Lord, let him regard it. <laughs> yeah, they often did meet on Sundays, the day that the Lord rose up, the day of Christ, they call it. Okay? Very peculiar. Uh, the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, anyways. Now, continuing on here. So he's saying, praying always that they might have the knowledge of his will, not that God would just show them away, lead them around like babies. No, you are an inheritor. You are going to be a king and a priest unto God. So you need to have that knowledge in order to rule and reign. Right? Okay. How much spiritual understanding do you have? How often do you pray for spiritual understanding and the knowledge of His will? I, I'm just as guilty of this, brethren, sister, fellow believer watching. So continuing on, verse 10. That ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Increasing continuously. It's a comfort to have the knowledge of God and to impart it unto others. We're going to see here in a moment, Paul, okay, in 1 Corinthians, I believe it was chapter 5 or 6, I might be forgetting, but um, he talks to those in Corinth and he says, there's, there's a sin that's, that one of you is reported doing, sleeping with his own father's wife so basically is his uh, mother-in-law okay his stepmom and he's like e even the Gentiles that no that don't have faith don't do this but yet you guys are still with them and he's kind of sharply rebuking them and we're going to look at the example in 2nd Corinthians where he recollects this and he says hey I came at you pretty harshly but I only did it because I loved you and I cared for you Okay, you, you gotta you gotta tell somebody the full truth and correct them in their ways of error in order for them to straighten up. Yeah, more than likely they're gonna be offended. More than likely they're gonna be hurt. More than likely they're gonna get upset with you at first. Because you're pointing out their own wrong. Nobody likes to be told that they're wrong. But that's all the word of God does. And you Instruct others in that way, okay? You encourage them to continue in the right way, and then you comfort them as they change. <laughs> they might not want to be around you at first because you just sharply rebuked them, but yet still. So continuing on here. Um, so it's all by his knowledge, and you can continue reading there, but for the sake of time, skip down to verse 14 with me. So he's talking, you know, having his will, understanding uh, his spiritual understanding, and having the wisdom and knowledge of his will, okay? Sorry for repeating myself, but verse 14 says, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, okay? Understanding whom, the, the knowledge of whom we have faith in his blood, in the one that we have faith in, to give us the forgiveness of sins by the shedding of his blood. Verse 15 says, Who is the image of the invisible God? Okay. Jesus Christ, the one that shed his blood upon the cross, is the image, physically here on the earth, the body, the image of God. Not made with hands. Okay. That would be blasphemy. Drawing a picture. Making a carving. No, but... His physical body was the image of God. Okay, and then if you skip down to verse 25 now. Again, pause and read if you'd like. But verse 25, Paul recollects all this and he says, Whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is, excuse me, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. So he's talking about how this is his dispensation that was granted unto him. How, okay, you, through uh, 
Verse 14, in whom we have redemption through faith in his blood, okay, even the forgiveness of sins. That's what he's talking about. Simply by having faith in his blood, understanding it, because you can't just believe in it like a child believes in Santa Claus. They have no physical proof for it. They don't have any documentation. But here we have the word of God that's, I mean, shoot. There's... <laughs> Have you, have you looked at how many pages are in the Bible? It's quite a few. Anyways. Okay, verse 26. Even the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory? Okay, that our blessed hope is such a comfort, especially those that are going through a time of, of challenging remorse, persecution, uh, being saddened, being alone. Um, I... I'm not going to name any names, but I have a friend right now that's kind of struggling going back and forth with, hey, uh, I, and yes, it's a woman, but she's like, hey, I love my husband. But then she struggles and is kind of conflicted because he's not saved. And she's like, well, you know, he always drinks and, and he's talking about cheating on me and leaving me. And then everything's good for like a couple months and then it all comes back. And it's, it's a really challenging situation to talk about. And you might have a similar story, maybe not the same in particular, but someone that you've confided in or you've even experienced something like that. But it's a challenge in the world that only God can help you with. And if you have his knowledge and you're relying on his blessed hope, the hope of glory... Okay, there's comfort in that. And knowing that we are called unto peace, we, are, we take place in the kingdom of God. Okay, verse 28, whom we preach warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom. Okay, we preach warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ. So they're warning people through teaching them. And preaching unto them the knowledge the wisdom the spiritual understanding okay <clears throat> I hope that kind of makes sense and again like I was talking about with my friend and everything it's it's a challenging situation cuz yeah our sins are forgiven okay before God but here in our sinful flesh, we still have to reap those repercussions, suffer those repercussions of our sins. It's not like the moment that you believe your life is set perfect and you have a clean slate. No, if you smoked your whole life, you could still develop cancer in the lung. If you drank a lot in your life, you can still get liver disease. Um, if you have got married to an unbeliever or someone that's uh, doesn't want to ever even give the time of day to the word of God well you set yourself up so that you're stuck with that okay and you're only stuck with it so long as they want to be there because the unbelieving husband or the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the believing husband or the believing wife but if the unbelieving wants to depart you let them depart because God has called you unto peace. Okay. So this gospel that, I mean, I always bring it up. Go to Romans chapter 3, verse 21. Look at it real quick. This is the clearest, uh, most descriptive point of it. I mean, you can also see it in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 through 4, where it says... Uh, and this is the gospel by which you are saved, if you believe in how that Christ was, uh, how that Christ died, and um, was born again according to the scriptures, you are saved. 
Okay, I just completely paraphrased all that. But anyways, Romans chapter 3, verse 21. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifest, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe. It doesn't say all them that are water baptized, all them that pay their tithe, all them that turn to church every Sunday and put on a suit and tie, or the women wear dress. No, it doesn't say any of that. That is not in Scripture. The whole modern church idea is not in Scripture. It just says, <clears throat> rereading, Oh, <laughs> even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have sinned. The moment that you've sinned, you have come short of the glory of God, holding yourself up to the same glory that God would accept. Okay, now he is only going to accept the same glory that's on his level. Now, here's what he did. Being justified, verse 24, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, who God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. Did he get that? The moment that you believe, God sees his own righteousness. Simple enough. Okay, that is the gospel. And as soon as you understand that it's not your own doing, but rather it's by his doing that you have salvation. Okay, you have forgiveness of sins by his doing, his righteousness, his glory. Not your own righteousness, not your own strength. You have forgiveness of sins. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. And bearing in mind all this, that... Okay, where we started, Paul's example of what he told us, okay, we are ordered, we are commanded to be overseers of all the body of Christ. All believers are commanded to be overseers of fellow believers. Why? Because grievous wolves come in. Even you, some amongst yourselves will, will start to build up. And that's when the other fellow believers got to be like, hey, dude, stick to scripture wake up, kind of smack them around, and pull them out of it. Okay? And then what we went over in Colossians, how it's, how do we, how do we gain that ability to be overseers? Okay? Through having his, the knowledge of his will and his spiritual understanding. Not giving up on our own selves. We're going to get through a couple different sections here in Romans. Stick with me. So Romans chapter 5. Verse 1, Therefore, being justified, justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, it's through Him that we have peace with God. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we... Glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Okay. Backing up and rereading, okay. Through tribulation, we gain patience. Through patience, we gain experience. And that experience builds up hope, okay? When you're, when you're a new believer in Christ, things are hard. And the first time that something comes up, guess what? You're probably going to give in. You're probably going to uh, compromise with whoever it is, friend or family, that starts to argue back with you or say, oh, well, that's just how you interpret it. Okay, any private interpretation of the Word of God is pulled out of context. If it's not consistent with all of the Word of God, okay, and I, I mean from the beginning till the end, and yes, there are different dispensations. We already covered 
how Paul says that there is a dispensation that was given, given to him to preach unto the Gentiles. I understand that. We are not saved the same way Adam was. We are not saved the same way that Noah or Abraham or uh, uh, King David Okay, in the Old Testament. There are different ways that God worked at different times, but the prophecies of the Old prophesied of what came in the New Testament. And then we still have prophecies that are yet to come because of what is unfolded with Jesus Christ and with what has unfolded with Paul. Okay, So they stay consistent with themselves under the same circumstances in the same context. But when you pull things out of context into a private interpretation, then you've twisted the Word of God. Now you need to make sure that it stays consistent with itself. So here, knowing that we are built up through our faith, we gain peace with God through the faith in Jesus Christ's blood. Okay, and. We gain peace with him so that we can endure tribulations and that we can, through patience, gain experience and rely more on that hope. Verse 9 in chapter 5 of Romans, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Okay, the wrath is going to come through him. His punishment, his judgment is going to be sent out from him. Okay, yeah, the Antichrist is going to do all this and that and everything. Ultimately, the Antichrist couldn't do it if he didn't have permission from God to do it. Okay, he whom created all things and by him all things were and are created and they are servant unto him. He has all authority over it. Verse 10. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Okay. Let's skip ahead. Verse 12, or chapter 12, excuse me. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, before, or, excuse me, Romans chapter 12, verse 1. <laughs> Getting tongue twisted. Have my thoughts all scattered about. But let's continue. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, because he died and shed his blood for you. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, okay, praying for his knowledge of his will, for the knowledge of his will and spiritual understanding, being transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and even one members one of another. And every one members one of another. Okay? We are all intertwined. Okay? So basically, this whole hierarchy of a church system is against God. It's actually exactly what Jesus preached against when he came. If you read through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, okay, he's teaching against, preaching against the religious crowd, saying that they service him with his mouth, with their mouth, but their hearts are far from him because they are built up on pride. Call me a liar. 
<clears throat> finally, Romans chapter 13, or not finally, we still got a lot to cover here, but under this section of talking about the gospel, okay? Romans chapter 13, verse 12 through 14. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of the light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. So this goes right along with Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. What is it talking about the night is far spent? We'll get to that here in just a moment, but in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, it talks about those that are in darkness and those that are of the light. But ye, brethren, are in the light and not in darkness. Okay? So remember that. Keep a finger here so when we get to that scripture. <clears throat> just wanted to share it. Very uh, peculiar. But first, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Verse 3 through 4. I speak not this to condemn you, for I have said before that we are in our hearts to die and live with you. Okay? So, here we're looking at kind of Paul's self-example living by that command to comfort, that command to edify that command to teach and preach. So he's saying, I speak not this to condemn you, for I have said before that we are in our hearts to die and live with you. Great is my boldness of speech toward you. Great is my glory of you. I am filled with comfort. I am exceeding joyful in our tribulation. And then you can see, for when, for when we were uh, come into Macedonia, um, our flesh, and had no rest, we were troubled. Okay, and he starts going on. But basically, what he's talking about right here, he's referencing, like I mentioned earlier, the part in 1 Corinthians. I think it was chapter... I'm going to look real quick, just so I can give you an exact direction. Uh, chapter 5, 1 Corinthians chapter 5. is It is reported commonly... Uh, that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as is not so much as named amongst the Gentiles. Okay, so and you can continue reading here in Second Corinthians, but if you skip down to verse eight, is where he says, "For though I made you sorry with a letter, I do not repent. Though I did repent, for I perceive." that the same epistle has made you sorry, though it were but for a season. So he's talking about the letter that he wrote to him, and he's saying, I speak not to condemn you. And then he's saying, for though I made you sorry with a letter, I do not repent, though I repented. Okay, so he felt guilty for doing it, basically is what he's saying. But he knew that he had to do it. And he knew that he had to instruct them and be like, hey, knock it off. Go back to Romans real quick with me. I skipped one. Romans chapter 15. This is going to be interesting. Romans 15, verse 1 through 4. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproach of them that reproached thee fell on me. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the spirit of the scriptures might have hope. Okay. So
so basically, breaking down and seeing that through God's strength, we are made weak, but His glory is shined through. That we have the patience, the experience, to rely on that hope and to teach others of that hope and encourage others to look into that hope. Okay? Now let's go to 1 Thessalonians. We're almost done here. Just look at a couple of places where it says, Comfort one another. You probably know exactly where I'm going with. These are popular scriptures, and I've used them a lot in my recent videos. But 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 18, says, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Talking about the rapture, if you look at previous verses. But also, continuing straight along into chapter 5, because there were no chapter and verse divisions, because the very first word also is but. So contrast. But of the times and seasons... Brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Pause. Look at verse 4. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Okay, and if you look back at verse 3, the one in between. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them. In chapter 4, or verse 4, it says, But ye, brethren are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. So the day of the Lord has nothing to do unto you. You're going to be raptured out, as it says at the end of chapter 4. Skipping down to verse 9, For God has not appointed us unto wrath, but to obtain salvation by the Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, verse 11, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as ye also do. Edify. Remind others of these things. Build up people in the confidence in God, and the glory in God, and the trust in God, and the ability to know that they can approach with boldness and ask God for His no, the knowledge of His will, for spiritual understanding, and His discernment. Okay, First, or 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, one of my favorite verses in all of Scripture, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and a sound mind. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, Study to show thyself approved, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Chapter 4, verse 1, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, even some that called themselves believers. There will be a departing from the faith. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Okay? Guys, viewer, either you're a brother or sister in Christ, or if you're lost, hey, I went over the gospel for you. Um, the Word of God is a comfort. Yeah, it might condemn you for a season, but sin is only pleasurable for a season, and then it's going to end up condemning you for all eternity. Get right with God. Ask for His spiritual understanding and the knowledge of His will. I guess that's that. I hope this was a blessing unto you and an encouragement. That was the point of it. Um, that you would reach out to other fellow believers, rather babes in Christ or the elderly in Christ, the um, those that have more knowledge than you. They need prayer and support and correction just as much 
as the newborn babe in Christ. Because we all live in sinful flesh. We all struggle. It's just a reminder. Stay strong. Stay true. We could be here yet for a few more years. But we are in that time. We are in that season. Yourselves know perfectly of the time and season. But that day itself, it'll come on them as a thief. But it won't come on you because you're not appointed unto God's wrath. Anyways, thank you for watching. Till next time. Bye now.